Hello, I'm Intrilisium. Welcome to Aurora, the massively in-depth, frustratingly amazing space strategy game. Today, we are going to be designing proper fleet vessels, like not the tiny little fast attack craft we have. Proper actual cruisers, I think that's going to be the designation. Maybe cruiser, light cruiser, or cruiser destroyer, depending on how you word it. Like, the issue is that fleet designations and classes are not really a thing anymore like they used to be very strict and these days it's very open to interpretation um so what we designate our stuff as is kind of a big shrug so we're gonna be building two different ships uh the first one's gonna be the hardy which i'm just gonna put down as a cruiser for now or maybe like a command cruiser or something command cruiser and then the vash which we're gonna leave as a command cruiser for now but we'll change that later so um the purpose for this is if you have a look over here, you'll notice that we have a day shipyard and a night ship and a Draycross shipyard. I really want to call them day and night. So the day is 30,000 tons. The Draycross is 22 and a bit. I mean, it's going to go up to 30,000. That's going to take a lot of time, though. So the Draycross is normally for the moment going to be, you know, 22, 23,000. 30,000 tons is going to be a command, inverted commas, cruiser. That's going to be the one that we're not going to have many of in a fleet. And it's also going to be the one that has the jump drive. That way, it has the jump drive and it can jump anything of 30,000 tons or less. And then we will have, I think it's four ships we can jump at once. So it will have one of them to every three Dracos heavy industry ships. And then the Dracos ones are going to be our main ships. They're going to be the ones that do the main damage, the multi-role kind of purpose. The day ones are going to be uh, search... Command, jump drive, maybe point defense if we can get that on there. Yeah. So, um, let's get started. First things first, we know exactly what we're doing with one component here. We are going to go and design a tech. And it is going to be a jump drive. Efficiency 5, max scorching size, we're going to go 4. Jump radius is the minimum and we're going to go for a max ship size of 30,000 tons because we know that this is a like a guaranteed we know what we're doing here done uh, we'll chuck company name on the end of that Haley drive systems the first big chunky military drive is going to be developed by Haley. okay so we're going to then rename this because this is just the a mess 30k 450, which, you know, is jump size 4, 50 range, lovely. And that's a military jump drive. Great. The one thing it doesn't have is it doesn't say the efficiency. So I'm going to say that this is a um, E5, efficiency 5. And... The rest of that is good. So we're going to just instant that out. Go into refresh tech. Go to our jump drive and chuck that in. Now having a look at some of the others here. What is your efficiency? Fortune size 2. There we go. Drive ratio 3. 3. 3. These are all going to be obsoleted. Commercial drives can use four, military drives can use five. So, yeah, they need to be obsoleted. Right, now we've got that drive on board. That's, it's a big chunky drive. Let's be, let's, you know, let's not beat around the bush. That is a 6.6 kiloton drive. Ugh. Where's the other 5,000 tons coming from? Oh, yeah, 20 armor. Whoops. I'm going to put this armor down to 10 for now. Now, obviously, armor takes up a lot of space, but it has purposes. Obviously, the more armor you put on, it gets kind of like exponentially more weight. So we're going to go for 10 for now. Uh, it being the command ship and then on the jump drive, we don't really want it blown up. So it will probably veer to have more armor. We're going to put the deployment time on and a half years. Again, that's something we might adjust. And then we're going to pick up this ship optimizer. We're going to go desired tonnage. Well, we know what our desired tonnage is. It's 30,000. Desired speed, I'd like for 5,000. Uh, desired range, I'd like for 30 billion. Um, 
anywhere it goes, it's going to need a tanker. 30 billion isn't really going to get very far, but it will be far enough that we can drop the tanker and then continue on ahead. So just bear that in mind that it isn't designed to operate alone. It is designed to have a tanker. And then max engine and fuel. Let's see what we can get out of this now. We're going to go 40. We are now at laminate. No feasible solution. Hmm. Okay, what if we drop... Oh, that's for when towing. No, don't do that. Um... Also, we need to up the minimum number of engines. So, the issue with this is that currently, if we get shot and our engine explodes, we're dead in the water. In general, I'll put like four engines on a 30 kiloton vessel. Now, sometimes I might go lower. I might go three. But, eh, I don't really fancy that. Especially not on the command vessel, so... Oh, we also want to take that as military. There we go. Much better. Right. Uh, let's put on a jump drive as well. Um, yeah. Now, it's saying, hey, the drive is going to take up about 10,000 tons. That's fine. Um, looking at a little bit of a boost on the engine there. I'm wondering if maybe we want to drop the speed just slightly. Like, 5,000 is respectable. But also, it depends what we're doing. Like, if you've got beam ships, you want to be able to close with the enemy to fire your beams. Because beams are close range. If they're faster than you, you're never going to fire them. That's not going to happen. Like, you need to be able to decide, are we going to bring the engagement or are we going to run away? So if we go slower... There's a chance that we'll never be able to bring an engagement. How much extra like space do we make? Oh, this is uh, 20,000 tons. We lose about 700 tons by doing that. Can we go any higher? Yeah, we lose another 600 tons. Is that worth it though? Like we get, we get a truly phenomenal speed. I'm tempted to do this. Because that speed is really quite good. How much space are we losing? I mean, we're losing about 650 tons, which is actually quite a lot. Yeah, I think we'll go with the 5,000. So, having a look around. This one is more fuel efficient. It also saves us about 100 tons, which might be important. Military ships start to get pretty cramped. Uh, we could maybe consider, like, upping the desired range. Let's try opening it to, like, 40. Oh, we do lose a lot of maneuverability there. Let's go back down to 30. You'll just have to operate with a tanker for most of your voyage. The only issue I see here is that that's not many big fuel tanks. Like, we've got... Two very larges and a large. Four standards. Like, if our fuel tanks get hold, we lose all our fuel. We might be able to maybe switch some of these very larges out for, like, more large fuel tanks. That may be something we have to do. But I'm liking this. That's going to be our engine. Okay, let's design this tech. Uh, we will go down to engine... We need to go up to a 15% buff. Note that like a 15% buff is a massive increase in fuel. Like an extra 42% fuel. So then we're going to ramp up our size to 41. Hmm. Yeah. Military, fe uh, military fleets drink fuel like nobody's business. They, they go through it so quick. So this is going to be the MPD. We don't need that many sig figs. Thank you very much. Uh, FPH is 370 when you round it. And I should probably not put spaces in there. The mass is 2.05 kilotons. Okay. Let's instant that out. Oh. Didn't put a company name in. 
Devar and Void Singer. Well, I can alter that quite easily. Fresh tech. Engine, 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 engine. Hello there. Uh, rename comp. There we go. One, two, three, four. And then the fuel for that is two very larges. So bear in mind that a very large is a thousand tons and stores a million fuel, I believe. Yeah. And a large is 250 tons and stores a quarter million. So we can kind of make this work. I think it just means it's more expensive. Yeah. So look at the large. 15 geranium, 15 boronide, very large, 35. So you're almost saving a half the cost. But it being a military ship, I don't care about that. Like, a little bit more cost is fine. We don't want to lose all of our fuel. That would be very bad for us. Hell, we could even go so far as to use normal fuel storage if we wanted to. But then the cost does start to get pretty high. Like, mm, again, that's costing almost twice as much. So, for now, I'm just going to use larges and we'll go to... And then one, two, three, four. And then you wanted like 2,000 more fuel, which is like two fighter? I mean, that's going a long way, mate. We might as well just say, hey, have an extra one here. 8,000 liters extra. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, we can always shave some if we need to. Uh, bear in mind, we still need to deal with the maintenance life, etc. Right now, the maintenance life is just absolutely trash. So let's add 500 tons worth of engineering space. Uh, we'll add some maintenance. Ugh. That'll need really tweaking later on. That'll have to do for now. We'll need to adjust that later on, bearing in mind that like we still have weapons to add and sensors. So this is where we're going to get all kinds of funky. I actually don't know what the strength of a lot of these sensors are, so I'm probably just going to invalidate all of them, and we're going to start from scratch. I mean, I know the strength, I don't know the tech level that they're built on. So again, we're designing from scratch here. Let's go to sensors, we'll go to search sensor, and this is a active grav search sensor, 15, fine. Uh, resolution. Now. If you're doing a kind of a general sensor, 5,000 tons is kind of what you're aiming for. Um, that means you're looking and optimizing around detecting something of 5,000 tons. If they're smaller, they're going to get much closer. Like, look at this. This 1,000 ton object is going to get well within a million, despite the fact we can detect a 5,000 ton object at, what, over 23 million? So, this is going to be our command and control vessel. I think it's going to have, this is my standard loadout, two sensors for searching. One of which is going to be the anti-fact sensor in case they have thousand ton vessels. And the other one is going to be like aimed a little bit higher, like maybe around 7,000 to 8,000 tons just to get a bit more range out of it because the bigger resolution you look for, you get a bit more range, not hugely more. Notice that going down to a thousand tons is still more than half that, but you do. So we're going to optimize around 7,000 for this one and then we're going to pump the range up. So just going to go for a bigger sensor. Now, this is our search sensor. We need to find enemies to be able to kill them. We can go all the way to like two and a half kilotons and that would get us a pretty, pretty huge area. Uh, bear in mind, this is going to be really expensive to build. Like the cost of this alone, 800. That's more expensive for this sensor than it is for almost two freighters. Like it's just nuts. Um, so we're not going to go that large. Also because two and a half kilotons would take up most of the ship. We don't have that much space left. So we're going to ramp that down again. Um, but again, we do need to find people to be able to kill them. So let us aim to get something around the thousand ton mark. Thousand and fifty tons would get us a hundred twenty million range. And missiles, you tend to engage around 70 million. So that gives us almost, almost double. Maybe like an extra 60% on the range of our normal engagement envelope. Um, is that good? I don't want to maybe just tone it down a touch. 
save on space. Because, like, if we want to go down to just a mil uh, 10 million, 100 million, sorry, 101 million, I guess, we go down to 750 tons. I think going for the extra range matters. If we can't find the enemy, we can't kill them. So we'll go for 120 million. And then we're going to name this. It's going to be the ASS 16. That way I know instantly by looking at it what the tech level is. Because the next one, 21, will make this jump quite a bit in size. Um, it is going to be a range of 120 mil when targeting a resolution of 7 kilotons. We also need to say, hey, the mass of this thing is uh, 1.05 kilotons as well. Good. Anything else we need? I mean, we could include the EM sensor. Like, we could include data on that. But honestly, I don't care. Uh, we're going to instant that out after we get a company name. Kruba Mapulon Electronics Industries. Okay, and we'll instant that out. And then, like I said, we're going to aim for one that deals with facts. So we're going to scroll all the way down here for a fact. And then we don't need to build it this large. We're going to ramp down the size and we're going to say, hey, if the fact gets to within about 19 million, we'll detect it. Now, that sensor is 100 tons, so it's much, much simpler to build. In fact, look at the cost. It's only 32. Uh, that's acceptable. I might be tempted to go just a little larger, but... Facts are a little rarer. There are a few things that use them, but they are a little bit less common. And so this, I think, is okay. Also, facts generally don't engage you at huge ranges. They don't have the ability to. Um, the only exception that will be like is if you have a missile fact that is using something else to get a lock. And even then, it still needs a missile fire control that can reach out far enough. So the way that missile locks work, by the way, you need a missile fire control which will get the lock. That needs to be on your ship. But you also need an active search sensor that can detect the enemy. And that doesn't need to be on your ship. That can be anyone in the fleet. So this ship has a really long range sensor. We can use that to give the target to other ships who can then use their missile fire controls to lock on. So they don't need to have as powerful sensors. Now, for facts, facts often can't mount these huge sensors. But someone else can feed them data. Now, even then, they need kind of a big missile fire control, so it's unlikely your fact is going to be a problem. We could even maybe go smaller than this, um, but then we're still talking about, you know, we're talking about maybe saving a dozen tons or something. Uh, well, that saves 40 tons. That said, again, we've got to find them to kill them, so I think going for the 100 tons is fine here. We'll go, you're an ASS, 16. You are range of 19.4 M versus a one kiloton mass. Your mass of your sensor is 100 tons. And you are produced by... Company name. Lake Mapulion. Oh, Mapulion have got their hands in this vessel all over with the sensors. I guess it's like maybe like Mapulon are the company that are basically doing the entire sensor suite for the vessel. And then they're contracting part of the services out to these other like companies like Blake. So we'll instant that out. And now, because we're doing point defense, we need a way to detect enemy missiles. So we're actually going to go for a third sensor. Now, this sensor isn't for the command and control ship. This is for the PD ship. They just happen to be the same in this case. And this time, we're going to ramp the resolution all the way down to 50 tons. Now, we actually don't care about 50 tons. We care about this. Size 6 missiles. Doesn't mean the enemy missile is going to be size 6. It might be bigger. It might be a size 12. But we're going to optimize for the size 6 because that's generally... The best. Anything smaller than a size 6 will be counted as size 6 to determining if you can see it with, you know, ASS. So, determine for the worst case scenario. Aim for, hey, what will happen if you're size 6? So, at this point, we need to say, hey, uh, we need to detect these enemy missiles so that we can shoot them down. I think we need to go a million range, which makes it a 250 ton sensor. Which kind of sucks. I'll be honest. But I think it's necessary. So, um, uh, how much can we save? Like, if we went down to 100, we'd still be able to detect them. Let's do some quick maths here. Enemy missiles, if they move fast and move 70,000, if they move for that for five seconds, they'll move 350. Um, I kind of want the chance to see them. 
Uh, we're not using anti-missile missiles, so we don't need to lock on to them and fire missiles back. We don't need all that. We just need to be able to see them to be able to respond, which our point defense guns should be able to do, provided we have in lock on when they're at close range. Now, there is a bonus in the game. The longer you have locked on to a missile, the more chance you'll have to hit it with a gun. So we could up our size a little bit. I'm going to say we'll just go for a little bit more conservative here. We'll go for 65 ton, which gives us just over half a million range. So we'll call this uh, an ASS-16. You've got the idea. Uh, with a range of 518K. Not M this time. And then we're optimizing not for a resolution. So we're just going to say we're optimizing for, five, uh, for a size 6 missile. So size 6. And then the weight is mass. 65 tons. That seems reasonable. Now, we will see bigger missiles like size 12s. We'll see them at 2 million, size 8s, almost a mil. We could make the sensor bigger. It's something that we will consider when we do like a second pass over this vessel. So, company name, Lake Borealis. Ooh, okay. Not the pool on this time. Uh, and we'll chuck that in there. Instant. Right. So, at this point, we refresh our tech. And then we say, hey, I would like one of each of these. Thank you. Now, notice we don't have as much space to play with as we used to, which kind of sucks. Um, okay. That's great. Now what? Well, now we're going to add the point defense because all that is is detection ability. Uh, oh, actually, before we do that, before I forget, we want an auxiliary control. We want an auxiliary control on all our big, beefy ships because if you shoot the bridge and it explodes, the ship's dead. So we want a backup option, which is the auxiliary control. Uh, we also might want damage control, which I believe is, for some reason, in its own folder. That is 150 tons, so... Mm -hmm. But damage control allows you to, like, fix stuff a bit quicker. Um, now... We want... Gauze cannons. Gauze cannons are quite reasonable point defense. Now, they're better when you get fire rate 4, but that's 15,000 tech points away. So we'll settle for 3. Um, launch velocity doesn't really matter. That just means your range. And then the size versus accuracy. This allows you to make the gauze cannon smaller. Like, we can make it really small. But it decreases the chance of hitting. Like, 0.5 gets you an 8% chance. Six hull size, which 300 tons, gets you 100% chance. Now, that's 100% of normal chance. It's not, hey, you will shoot a missile every time. That's going to get varied by a lot of things. But it means that, hey, we're not going to put another malice on it. Whereas if we're, like, down here, we're like, hey, you will probably miss nearly every time. There is a slight bonus, obviously, that you can get more guns on, but there is a sweet point here. If you do the math, this gun will, on average, hit more missiles than this gun. However, and here's where things get a bit funky, it has a higher variance because if it's 70% chance, then the more likely you are to miss or hit more than the average. Like, you're going to have a much wider variance, if I'm explaining that correctly. Whereas this is much tighter variance. Like, you're much more likely to hit around the same number. This, it can vary a lot more. And here's the downside. If missiles are coming at you and you're shooting them all down, great. If you overkill and shoot more down than there are, well, you can't do that. So the variance kind of doesn't benefit you past a certain point, but it can impact you. For instance, if you don't shoot down more missiles than normal. Like, you do the opposite. You shoot down less missiles than your average because the variance also applies to shooting down less stuff. Then you can get hit. So on average, normally, I think this is a better option. The lower variance means that you're more likely to know what you can shoot down and know what you can deal with. This is kind of like a Hail Mary. Like, there is a chance it will perform better if you get masses of missiles shot at you. Great. But there's also a chance it'll perform worse. And if you're up against something that you can normally shoot down on average, then the extra kill ability of the more guns isn't going to aid you. All it's going to do is possibly fail you and let missiles through. So for this purposes, uh, this purposes, these purposes, or this purpose, um, I like going with the full-on chunky guns. So we'll whip that out. Uh, this is going to be complete renaming scheme here. We'll add a company. Iron Hand Kinetics. Nice. And we're going to rename you to Gauze Cannon. And then this is just trash. Like, R100, 100, 100. One of these is 100. It's 100% chance to hit. But what about everything else? Like, the velocity? That's 10,000. 
The rate of fire? That's three. I don't need to know. What, what is 100, 100? Um, I'm going to put ROF three. Um, and that's at range 10K. Do we need to know anything else? Uh, mass 300 tons. This I will rarely use unless it doesn't go in the name. If it, if it does get used, it goes in the name. If it's not in the name, we're at 100%. So this is good. We'll instant that. And now we don't actually want to use this. I know I just said, hey, we build a gauze cannon. But here's the reason. This gauze cannon, if we stick it on our ship, it is going to have a really hard time shooting missiles because it's stuck on the ship. We'll have to turn the entire ship to try and hit the missile. It's like saying, hey, you know that pistol? Why don't we bolt it to the front of the tank and then try and shoot people by turning the tank around? Well, no, you you want to you wanna put it on like a pinnel or an axis or something like that. You know, you want to you be able to move it. And that's why we have turrets. So if we go down and we select the gauze cannon we just made. Here's how we get guns to, be able to track faster. And that's why we've been working on our turret tracking speed and fire control speed. You want this to be the same because you will be limited by the lower of these. So being the same, we get 4,000. If one of them was 3,000 and the other 4,000, we'd be limited. And it would suck to have a tech better, but still be kind of restricted. So try to keep these the same. As they're 4,000, you'll notice that we can go for, say, a 4,000 tracking speed. The rotation gear will be 10%. If we go to four times that, 16,000 tracking speed, the rotation gear is going to be 40%. Now, I know you could say, well, why don't you just go past that and go like 25? And like, yeah, you can, but here's the issue. Your fire control is not going to be able to keep up. Fire controls can be made to four times that number. And I can show you that. Like if we go down here to fire controls, uh, normal range, normal speed. There we go, speed. Fire control, four times size, four times tracking speed. Bam. And suddenly it can track at 16,000. So we want to make sure this desired tracking speed is 16,000 because we're going to make that the same with the beam fire control. And this is going to aid it in just following missiles. It should mean that any missile that's going 16,000, we have no issue with tracking and we should shoot down. Now, missiles are probably going to go faster than that, which means that we're probably going to miss. That's just how it is. Um, so we're going to need to just shoot more. And we can do that. Welcome to the quad gauze cannon. Instead of firing three, let's fire four lots of three. And throw 12 shots down range. Now, you'll notice that the gear goes from being 40% to being 32. The larger you make this, the more guns you add on, the slight benefit you get. And the same is true for, like, armor. So we're going to armor the turret because we don't want to get him blown up. Notice that if we look at armor size, armor cost, it's a bit better. Like, obviously the number's smaller, but that's the number for one gun. It doesn't go to four times. It actually, you know, goes to less than three times. So we're saving a little bit there. We look at the tonnage. It goes from being almost 500 tons to being almost, you know, 1,700. So we're saving a fair bit. Now, the reason we want armor on a turret is because turrets, because the gun isn't in the ship, it's not under the armor. It's on top of the armor with this turret swinging around. When we get shot at, our armor's not going to protect the turret because it's on the outside. So we want to put a little bit of armor on it just to protect it. Obviously, if we put like 10 layers of armor, you get quite a lot of uh, extra weight. And armor doesn't work the same way for turrets on the surface as it does for like protecting the ship. We don't want to have to calculate the whole like box system. So instead, it just increases the HTK, which is the hits to kill. If it takes four damage, it won't matter. If it takes 48 damage, it will kill the turret. So zero, you'll notice it can take eight hits because it's pretty chunky being a quad. If we have three layers of armor, it can take 20 hits. Now, a hit isn't necessarily a single impact. A hit is like a point worth of damage. A missile might do nine damage or might do 16 damage. So, you know, just be a bit cautious here. I think 20 HK is probably a reasonable amount for now. We have got the upgraded arm, which helps. That said, like, if we wanted to, we could go extra, you know, 300 tons. You could go crazy with this if you wanted. There'd be no point, but you could. I'm going to say we just go for, like, maybe three layers. What would four la uh, five layers get us? So it'll cost an extra 100 tons. It gets us eight extra HTK. I think three layers is fine. So we're going to company net. You know what? That's not company name. I think we don't want to have Iron Hand Connects Turret by someone, someone, someone. So we're going to call this a quad 
GC. Rate of fire. And then this is 12 because it's got four of them. And then the mass is 1.75 kilotons. And we'll also say it's HTK, I think. Oh, we need to say the tracking speed. That's important. So more important than the mass is the tracking speed of 16K and HTK of 20. Iron Hand Kinetics Turret. Great. Um, I find it very important to put a lot of the stuff in the name of the turret because it never shows you some of the stuff. I'm pretty sure like tracking speed, it doesn't show you after this. And you're like, hey, which turret was my shooty quickly turret? I can't remember. Um, is this all good? I'm going to say yes. So we're going to instant that. And now we're going to need to make a beam fire control for it. We're going to whip, uh, whip out a company name, Arakin and Void Singer. Um, it has a range. It has a speed. We are going to have maximum tracking speed. Now the range, we don't actually need to be maximum. Like, we don't need it to shoot at 48,000. Remember, the range of our gauze cans is only 10,000. So we could go down to like, hey, point two. That gets us almost 10,000. That's fine. It's not going to be shooting at anything particularly actively. It's very unlikely we'll actually use this to shoot other ships. And if we do, they're probably going to be unarmed ships that we can just walk up right next to and just go bang, 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 bang. So it's a 20 ton sensor. It would be five tons if we hadn't like maxed out the tracking speed. So we're going to rip off the name, put it in the back here. And then we're going to say you are range 10, uh, 10K, not million. And then your tracking speed is 16K. And I'm going to just name this a beam fire control EFC. That is looking all good. Do, 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 do. We'll instant that. Close this down. Fresh tech. We'll go grab our beam fire control. I'm actually going to put two of them on because I don't want them to get damaged and then not be able to fire our anti-missile weapon. That would be very bad. And then we'll go get our gauze cannon and we'll get the quad. I'm going to say, let's try and get two on board. So, this ship can now pump out 24 shots of point defense, which is still not probably going to be enough because they can only track at 16,000 and missiles can go quite a lot more than that. But it's a start. It has a pretty respectable tonnage. I'm thinking we might want to consider having another missile sensor in terms of an active sensor. Again, if you can't detect the missile, you can't shoot it down. We'll have to see about that. Maintenance life needs to go up. Fuel. How are we on fuel? We calculated that and is it still fine? It is still fine. Uh, yeah, that speed is also good. So far, this ship is kind of holding together. Uh, we will want to put on a thermal sensor. And we'll go for the bog standard one for now. What else do we need? Um, more longevity. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if we can get this up to 24 months. We do have like a thousand tons to play with here. Yeah, seems to be reasonable. Let's add on another uh, sensor to try and detect missiles. We've got our two beam fire controls. We've got 21 engineering spaces along with two large maintenance bays. I'm kind of worrying that if one of the maintenance, if both the maintenance bays get hold, we don't have the supplies to rebuild. So we might want to just whip on a normal maintenance storage bay. And then like take off one of the engineering spaces or something. Yeah. All right. And we've still got a bit of space left. So let's consider going up on armor. No. Yes. Okay. We can get to 11 armor. Now, we could also put a laser on here or something. You know, we could make up the space by saying, let's put on a weapon that we can actually use. Um, That would be possible. Again, we need to put a beam fire control on, which would get all kinds of annoying. Um, If we put missiles on here, we need a missile fire control. 
Again, all this stuff that would really add to the weight. Uh, lasers would also need a... Um, what's it called? Lasers would need a... There are words here. I'm getting to them. Reactor. They would need a reactor to charge them. So, I don't think that's feasible. What we could do is maybe, like, bang on a few box launchers and be like, hey, in case of emergency, pull. And like, hey, if, if anyone gets too close, we just fire off, you know, eight short range missiles or something. It might not do anything, but it would be something we could consider. Like, how much would we make if we got rid of that one layer of armor? Eh. It'd be like a fax worth of missiles. I'm not sure that's really worth it. It might add to like a, a first strike weapon. It's something we can consider. So that will be like our main cruiser. It's got 24 shots it can output. It's got the two beam fire controls. We could add a third for backup just in case, but it's fine. Four engines, a range that's over 30 billion, uh, deployment time that's over two years just. And it does have big sensor, medium sensor, and then two tiny sensors for missiles. And they're not tiny, they're 65 tons, but... You get the idea. They're aiming for tiny. And currently an armor rating of 11, which is quite respectable. Now, before I forget, we are going to pop over here to miscellaneous. We're going to put a prefix of G1, because they're generation 1, and we're going to name them, because they deserve a really good name list. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to select oh, 40k battle barges. Hmm, maybe battle cruisers? Battle barges, battle cruisers. Battle cruisers. Battle barges. Sure, we'll go battle barges. Why not? Okay. And then we'll also go into tick on senior CO, which means that they will go up from having a commander to a knight commander. Now, while there is some room to like twiddle with this, there's a lot a little bit of space there. We can maybe add something, maybe take away something, maybe, you know, strip out a few things and replace them with box launchers. This is, you know, kind of like <sighs> What are we saying? What's the word? Um, frippery? Or like icing on the cake or whatever, you know? Better to decide this when we have a better view of the land. And that means we're going to pop over to the Vash. Obviously, we're going to chuck in auxiliary control. We're going to put senior CO. I'm also going to pop over here. I'm going to say prefix with G1 for generation one. And then roll down here and grab ourselves a name list from Warhammer 40k Strike Cruisers. Oh, we should also select random names. So they just don't do it in alphabetical order. Some of the things that bugs me about the game is that they will just select from alphabetical order and you'll be like, A, 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 A. Uh, it's also why if you do this with a ship list, because you can't randomize that, your first ship will be Aardvark and your second ship will be like Abacus, whatever, you know. It gets a little bit silly. Luckily, I deliberately randomed my name list before I uploaded it so that we're getting a bit more variety in it. Uh, okay. Um, also, if you name them after people, you get Andrew, Andrew. Andrew be like, I've got Andrew Lloyd Webber, I've got Andrew Johnson, I've got Andrew, and you'll be like, this is silly. This is silly, mate. So anyway, what are we going to plonk on this ship? Well, firstly, it doesn't need a jump drive, but it does need engines. So we're going to pop over here and we'll say, what is our desired tonnage? It was going to be 23,000 or 22,000, depending on how we do this. I'm going to say, let's actually go middle road and let's say 22,500. Desired speed is the same, desired range is the same. We'll go down a number of engines and then we'll say, no jump drive. Maybe say eight layers of armor for now. We can always tweak that later. Optimize. Okay. What we're seeing is a 41 at 115. Is this a 41 at 115? You might be a 41 at 115. It might be the same engine. Or you might be like a 43. One, two, three. Hmm, maybe. Maybe. Let's go into design tech. So, I'm going to pop down to engine. Uh, if we want to give up like... Oh, actually, that's pretty brutal. Giving up, I think, 70 tons of space. To save 200,000 tons of fuel. No, not on a military vessel. And that 43 is 1.1, not 1.15. So we've got 
and then we'll crank up the size to the 41 that they wanted. It is the same engine. My God. Well, I just realized, obviously, this desired tonnage is exactly three quarters of the 30,000. This works really, really well. I didn't realize this. Great. Perfect. One, two, three. I only just... Uh, this is taking me way too long to twig. I'm obviously very tired. Okay, uh, fuel. We know what we're doing here. We mentioned the whole large fuel storage thing before. So we add four. Then we add one, two, three. And then we want to add, I believe, one standard, three... We're going to add two standards. Done. Okay. Plenty of space left. Well, what now? Well, let's say give it eight less of armor. We've got a load of space left. Yeah, this is where things get kind of weird. You're like, hey, we just designed our command cruiser. That's why I designed the command cruiser first. Because it makes you get into the mindset of we need to be really, really, like, efficient on space. And then when you're like, hey, we've got loads of space to play with. You can have fun. So, I'm thinking this is going to be a little bit multi-roll. I mean, multi-roll is definitely less efficient, but let's give it a go. Um, I'm thinking missiles and beam weapons, which, hey... Maybe it's a little bit overkill, but worth a try. So, we will need a sensor just in case, because although it can get by without a sensor, that means that we're relying on the command cruiser, and I don't want that. So, instead of using any one of these sensors, we're going to build our own. And this is going to be a complete middle of the road sensor. It's going to be designed for 5,000 tons, and it is going to be aiming to see people at. I'm going to say, there we go, 225 tons, 50 million range. We could maybe go like a little bit lower. Again, you know, you, you pay an exponential cost in size for what you're actually getting. So if we go down to 200 tons, we only lose a little bit of range. And like, hey, if we lose like 100 tons off the sensor almost, we only lose like 10 million. We still got this. Um, You know what? Yeah, we're going to rely a lot on our command ship. Let's go for this kind of truncated firing range. That's fine. So we're going to accompany it up. Ram Tam Tam Reynolds. And then this is the ASS. Uh, range is 40.6 million when looking for a resolution of 5 kilotons. The mass of the sensor is 150 tons. And it is by... You also we need to put in the 16 on the ASS so we know that what generation it is. Um, let's instant that out. Then fresh deck. Bam. Okay, and we're not gonna make a backup for that. Doesn't need a backup. That's fine. Do you have a damage control? No. Let's get a damage control on board. Okay, now we're getting places. Now what do we want to add to it? Well, missiles to start. That means a missile fire control and a magazine. Again, we're working on magazine tech, so we'll probably have like a second generation version of you by the time we actually start rolling you out. We also want beam fire control and beam weapons. And I think that's the best place to start. Like we've touched missiles before, so let's touch on this. So we're going to design tech. We're going to pop over to lasers. And we're going to have a look at this. So damage output of six, firing rate of... 10. Now, I'm actually going to see if I can find the uh, laser damage profile in Aurora C-Sharp, because they did change it, and I want to show you the change. Okay, let me see if I can find it for you. Um, here we go. So, this is what I'm talking about. Each of these boxes is like a layer of armor. If you've got a one damage missile, it'll hit one box. But if you've got four damage, it'll go one, two, three, four. But that's missiles, carronades, and ramming. You can't do ramming. The AI can. Over here, railguns, particle torpedoes, they do this kind of very deep penetrating. Lasers do the most penetrating of all, which is why they're pretty damn good. Um, they will go all the way down the center. So if we go for a three damage, one, two, three, all three of that is into armor. If we do four, 
that gets applied to the top. Five applied to the top. Six back in again. So you want one, two, three, six, nine. It's basically multiples of three up until you get to like 17. And it's a five, 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 and then seven. So it goes up by, I think it's one, 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 three, 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 five, 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 seven, 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 etc. So yes, make of that what you will. There is a formula for it. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, we will probably want to make our lasers around this. So a damage output of six is great because that gives us the four penetration with a little bit on top there. So we consider that. However, there's also the choice of like downscaling going for the three. Now notice that the three fires twice as fast. It fires every five seconds as opposed to every 10 seconds. So there is a benefit. You can be like, hey, well, what if we just do double penetration as opposed to the now, there is another mechanic in Aurora, which is, um, I don't know the exact stats on it, which is shock damage. If you hit an enemy with a powerful attack rather than lots of little ones, there is a chance to do shock damage, which will damage internals and stuff, etc. Um, without having to worry about the armor. So it's a good way of being able to say, hey, that's got a lot of armor. Why don't we just hit it with big, powerful attacks? And basically, it's like you're causing structural damage rather than just trying to get through armor. You're like hitting it so hard, the entire like frame of the ship is bending and breaking and getting knocked around sensitive components are getting jostled um so you could go for the bigger attack however for us i'm kind of tempted to go for the smaller one on the basis of we can spam them hmm. also the power requirement for this is six as opposed to this which is three so pretty tempting um it's also useful to shoot down missiles now there is a downside to this which is the range that has a range of 180. This has a range of only 900. Not 900, 9,000. So, uh, 90,000. Wow. 180,000 versus 90,000. Basically halving our range. One thing worth checking is bringing up the beam fire control and saying, like, how far can we shoot? Well, it says 48, but if you go to range, we can crank that up and we can go, hey, we can shoot, you know, past the range of our lasers. We don't need necessarily to do that. So, if we go, like, there, maybe. Hmm. Now, bear in mind, this is a multiplier. It's four times the size, four times the range, which means that if you want it to shoot down missiles as well, to, like, make it multi-roll, then you're suddenly going, bam, this is a 400-ton component because it's four times four, which is 16 times. It can get pretty painful. Do we want really long-range lasers that can also shoot down missiles? Eh. Like, yeah, like, we'd like have a lot of things, but also we could just say, hey, why don't we just shorten the range? If we shorten the range, then these can also shoot down missiles. It's also going to be half the tonnage. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm like, yeah. This is a tough choice. I think it might be better off to go for the bigger one and then have a spread of weapons and then still all route them through the one fire control. Or we dedicate fire controls and we make two different fire controls. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's make one of each type. So we want this to be uh, shooting down missiles, potentially, but also targeting the enemy. So we're going to go for tracking speed of 16,000 and a max range of 96. So just a little bit longer. We could maybe bring it back and go to like 1.75, just 6,000 less than the range of our lasers. Um, yeah, let's do that. Because lasers have damage fall off. If they shoot at max range, the damage would be a lot less than if you shoot at, say, close range. Um, we will rock a company name, Iron Hand Pros. Oh, that said, if we're shooting at close range, the enemy's probably shooting us. Yeah, we'll make both and then we'll see what we can do. Right. Beam Fire Control. Again, we just shorten the name. Add a couple of Ks to simplify things, and we'll add a mass as well for 175 tons. And then... Oh, you can put a mass on you. Huh. All right. Instant. Then we're going to flip this around. We're going to say, hey, what if we just say the tracking speed is like normal tracking speed? Uh, where is that? Oh, there we go. The top. 
But the range, we go for four times. Now, this is going to be designed for our bigger lasers. These bigger lasers, we may not even need a turret. We can just put them in the hull as they are. It would require us to, you know, have a ship that moves pretty fast, but we're aiming to have a ship that moves at, you know, 5,000. Maybe not as fast as we need for some purposes, but it will save us on turret, which, you know, is extra weight. So, yeah, I'm down with this. Uh, this is going to be the BFC. Okay there. Okay there. And then mass 100 tons. Shock in a company name. Duncan Devar and Electronic Systems. And we'll instant that as well. Okay. Fresh our tech. Grab our beam fire controls. And we know that we want this one. And this one. Okay. Back to the lasers. Well, easy done it. We know that we need the maximum capacity recharge rate because if we lower that, the fire rate goes down. We know we want damage six for this so we can get the max range. Um, if we change the laser, you'll see that the range goes down. So we want the best type of laser we have. Uh, the range modifier, note that that keeps falling off. That means that like every 30,000, they'll be fall off. Every 10,000, they'll be fall off, etc. And fall off is where the damage goes down because of the range. Basically, the idea being that like the laser at long range will start to disperse and be less uh, concentrated. Um, you can make the laser smaller for a longer recharge rate. We don't want that because we don't have the tech. We also don't care. Uh, mount. You can make a... Spinal mount, and the spinal mount means that you can make the laser one size bigger than your tech would normally allow. But you may only have one of it per ship. I think there's actually a bug at the moment, which means you can abuse that and have more. But the idea is one per ship. You can also make the advanced spinal mount. The idea being that you build them into the structure of the ship, like the halo mech cannons, etc. We don't have the tech, so something to be aware of for the future. This is basically good as is. We're going to chuck in a company name. Kruber and DeWitt. Beautiful. And then we're going to have a lot of time messing around with this. So we're going to call it a near ultraviolet laser. So near UV laser. It is 15 centimeters, which honestly I don't really care about. C3, that is kind of important. Um, and then we are going to put down the damage in the rate of fire. So the damage is 6 per 10 seconds. And then the range is 180k. Now, this part will matter. The 15 centimeters doesn't. That just affects damage. We can, in fact, you know, completely forget this. Um, but I kind of like it just to be like, ah, oh, Armand's a 15 centimeter laser. It's more of an in-universe thing than anything else. So we're actually going to move this to the back on the basis of that doesn't matter. Um, I'll actually put the C3 here because that does matter. That means capacitor three. It needs three power every five seconds to charge up. If you get less power than that, it'll take longer. And then we'll put the mass down of 250 tons. Well, instant that out. And now we're going to go for our 10 centimeter laser. So, oop, all the way down there. Company name, Von Krau Armaments. Oh, hello. Now, this is a, starting from scratch. Near ultraviolet laser with a damage of three every five seconds. Uh, the range is 90k. Uh, it is a C3 10 centimeter laser with a mass of 150 tons. And then we will instant you as well. Ah, right. We do want to make one last thing, and that is the turret. Using smaller laser. So obviously we want to go for the desired tracking speed of 16,000. Uh, that should be fine. The turret hit to kill. We could like go for a quad turret with this. That'd be quite impressive. Again, there's a chance that the turret just gets taken out, which, you know, risky. Maybe go four layers. Hmm. Yeah. That all looks good. The tracking speed is nice. We've got a quad going on. Yeah. I don't think there's anything I want to make changes to here. And honestly, it reads kind of right. The only difference is the mass. So we'll change that to, you know, 119 tons. 
Um, obviously, it's gone from being 150 tons for one, so 600 tons for four, to having an extra 50% placed on it. But that's to get that tracking speed up. It does also mean that if there's enemies that are really, really fast, we'll be easily hitting them. So there are benefits to this. Uh, now, the difference is, do we want to go four of these or do we want to go, hey, let's go for a little less? <laughs> you know, let's, let's bring it back. We don't need to go, you know, overboard here. And I'm thinking maybe we want to go twins. And then we want to just, you know, maybe build two turrets or something or whatever, rather than going for the full on quad. And this is something we might end up playing around with just to try and get this right. Hit to kill eight. I don't like that. Means it can get killed by a nine damage missile. Yeah, we'll go for the twin. And we'll definitely want to put that this is a uh, mass 490 with a HTK of 10. And we also want to put the tracking speed. TS 16K. And we'll instant that out. Right. Fresh tech. Lasers. So we're going to chuck this down. Uh, we're also going to say that this Lind Borealis thing is obsolete. That's the one we used in our STOs. And then we also want to get our 250 ton one. Now, this is going to be kind of like our main anti ship armament. It's not going to be missiles. So we're actually going to add, say, four of these. Um, did we add a beam fire controls? We did. Okay. And then we add another twin turret. Now, that actually doesn't take up much of the ship. We can still get our missile weapons in. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to add a missile weapon. And then once we have that in, we can kind of play around with numbers, see, hey, do we want to add more lasers? Do we want to add, you know, more missiles? We can have an adjustment. There's also the debate of like, do we want to add an anti-missile search sensor? Because this thing can shoot at missiles. Hmm. How big would a very small anti-missile thing be? Like this one here is... You know, range. Oh, not that one. Sorry, this one here is range half a million at 65 tons. If we just brought that down a lot. Yeah. Well, that's something we can definitely add on at the end. You know, if we've got space. No, no point just like thinking about that now. Let's work on missiles. So, design tech. Do we have missile launchers? Well, we have our box launch at the size 16. We have our box launch at the size 6. And we have our slow fire. Again, all of these are very specific use. They're not this. Um, we're going to design a new tech. This is going to be a missile launcher. Reload rate 3. That's really handy for this. And size, we're going to go size 6 because that is my standard size of missile. Going bigger isn't as bad as it used to be in Visual Basic, though. In Visual Basic, you used to want to go six and six only. The way sensors got like changed a bit and missiles got changed, going like eight or something isn't as bad. Note how the rate of fire is better on six. So what we're going to do here is say, hey, instead of firing every 25 seconds, we don't care about getting as many missiles out as possible. And here's the reason. If you fire a batch of missiles every 25 seconds, most of the time the enemy's going to shoot them down every 25 seconds and they're going to fire, you know, the same amount of shots. What we can do is we can say, hey, let's make the reload rate longer. And we can get a smaller missile launcher, which means you can have more of them. The idea being that you make a bigger salvo to overwhelm the point defense. Like we could say, hey, let's go all the way down to like 0.3 size and it will take. But how long is that? Like 20 minutes? We're not going to go that far. We could go this far, like eight minutes between, and we'd get 120 tons. We could go 160 tons, it only takes two minutes. Uh, my general rule of thumb is maybe like the 0.6, but the 0.4 actually has its merits. I'm going to say the 0.4. We're going to try and save as much space as possible. We need to punch our weight with these things. So the reason that this missile reload rate is really important is because if you don't have this, that would happen, and your reload rate would be horrific. So this is kind of key. We're going to whack on a company name. Von Cryo Lorelei. Von Cryo are really having their hand in here. And then we're going to completely like change this name because this is silly. Size 6 ML. And the rate of fire is what we care about. And then we also want the tonnage. So mass 120 tons. I don't like care. Hey, has you 
It's got a reduced size to your reload. And what's your reload rate? And we care about what the outcome is. And the outcome is that. We're going to instant it. Crash attack. And then we're going to go to a missile launcher. One, two, three, four, five, six. Minimum eight is what really kind of what we're going for here. And if we can get to like 24 or something, that's kind of the, mm, this is, this is a lot of missiles now. Now, missiles are kind of the OP thing in this game. As a player, you make huge salvos, they can hit things, you go past point defense, it's just a matter of numbers. But we are punching above our weight with this one because the enemy is so advanced and so numerous. And that's one of the issues is that if we run out of missiles, we're kind of screwed. So to go with this, we're going to need to make ourselves a missile fire control. So we can design tech. I'm going to go to our missile fire control, change it from search sensor to missile fire control. Resolution. Yeah, we have to pick a resolution this fires on. If it's a fact, it's going to be really hard to hit it. So again, we're going to aim for a 5000 ton vessel and sensor size. What range do we want to shoot this fact at? Well, we're going to go all the way to like 80 million. Now, here's the thing. We probably won't be firing a missile at 80 million. We'll probably have the missile be a little bit less. But missile fire controls say, hey, this is the first I can fire. If the enemy has electronic countermeasures, they will reduce the range of your missile fire control. So if we have a missile that can go 70,000 and the enemy is like, eh, I've got ECM. You'll be there going, well, why can't I fire my missile? We're well within the missile fire control of 80,000. Hey, we're even within the missile range of 70,000. But it says I can't get a lock. And that's because their ECM is reducing the range that your missile fire control can get a lock. So in general, make the missile fire control a bit more than your missile range. Just so that if they are reducing the range of your missile fire control, you can still fire the missile at its range. Because it doesn't affect the range of the missile. It just affects the fire control. So go a little bit larger. We're going to go for 80 million. Um, it should do us fine. We probably won't be firing at 70. We're we'll probably firing at like 60. So this should give us like optimal uh, advantage in this situation. We could maybe like trim a little bit off, but then we're talking about, you know, trimming 25 tons or something. And, you know, it's not worth it. Uh, Blake Vorkosigan. Put that in here. And then again, this uses all the same stats as a missile, as a uh, active. So we're going to go with URA MFC 16 with a range of 81.1 million against a resolution of 5 kilotons. And again, FAC's going to be able to get really close. We also need to put down your mass of 150 tons. Okay. Is there anything else we need to put down here? No, you're fine. Cool. And then we instant you out. Fresh tech. Oh, wrong one. Now, again, as I previously mentioned, if they take up the missile fire control, we can't fire. That would suck. So we're going to put two missile fire controls, even though they're 150 tons. So bear that in mind. Uh, obsolete component. Um, obsolete component. Okay. And that means that with two missile fire controls and 24 launches, we'll be firing uh, two batches of 12. We could change that. We could add another one and make it three batches of eight. And then if one of our launches gets knocked out, sorry, one of our fire controls gets knocked out, we just hook up the rest of the launches to it. Mm. I'd like a third, but at the same time, we might not be able to hold on to 24 launches. Right, let's design ourselves a magazine. Now, this is going to change because, like I said, our magazine tech is going to get better. But that's fine. Magazines are relatively cheap. Retooling for a new magazine will not be too bad. Uh, we are going to say, hey, magazine size. We're going to make you a multiple of six because our magazine our missiles are going to be six size. Then we're also going to make you a multiple of 24 because we have 24 launchers. That way, the, if we get to the end of our missiles, we won't be like, hey, I've got missiles for like two of the launchers. This is awkward. 
So we're going to go, hey, what if we make the magazine size 24 and then times that by six and then then times that by however many times you want to fire. Generally, maybe like six, seven times. So 36 times 24. We're going to go over to calculator. 36 times 24. 864. Now, that's not including the ones in the launcher. So this is six rounds plus the ones in the launcher. So seven rounds in total. Uh, let's go to size and then we're going to have to crank you all the way up. Um, and then we're going to go down. We need the capacity, not the magazine size, sorry. So we need 864. Yep, that's as close as we get, 870. Uh, this is a 3,000 ton magazine almost. Now, again, bear in mind that number is going to drop um, with the more efficient feed system, etc. So I might be able to get a bit of wiggle room going on. But that will fit. Do we want to go 24 missile launchers? That's quite a lot. Yes, we'll do it. Okay. So we will add a company name. Uh, oh, bear in mind that there is another option, which is to have two. Um, I'm going to keep that company name. Uh, we could have two magazines. We could like split it. So we could say, hey, instead of going all in one basket, what if we go two different magazines? Um... I don't know if that's better or not. The hit to kill issue, the explosion, the explosion of the magazine inside. Like if we get hit and the magazine explodes, we're kind of dead. Um, I don't know what the like thought process is on that. So I don't know whether two magazines would be better. Now there is a chance, and this is here, magazine neutralization chance, that we dump a magazine into space before it explodes. It's 70% at the moment. So yeah, maybe also we could add extra hits to kill. And that is something that I'm very fond of. It does decrease the capacity of the magazine, but we do not want this exploding. Like, if it explodes and every missile inside goes up, the ship is gone. You can imagine what happens if we detonate, you know, 864 points worth of missiles all inside the ship. It would not go well for us. So, I'm thinking, what if we go for two magazines and then we just make some adjustments? So, we need uh, half that. That's 432. So, we're going to go for a 432 size. And we'll maybe go for extra hits to kill four for now. Um... 432. Okay. It's to kill 9. Definitely want to up that a little bit. That'll get us an extra missile. Hmm. There we go. Perfect. Bang on. Uh, it will be pretty chunky. It's going to cost us like an extra 300 tons. The hits to kill is pretty good though. 14. Both magazines should be pretty robust. Uh, we're probably going to lose the drives before we lose the magazines. Now, adding both of these is definitely going to push this up. And we do need to put on maintenance facilities, etc. So I'm just going to put this over here for the moment. We're going to go to maintenance facilities. And I'm going to say, let's get a large maintenance storage. Or two. And then chuck on engineering spaces. Um... Wow, that maintenance life. I think it's the sensors that use up so much maintenance in the jump drive. Like, this didn't need anywhere near as much as the Hardy. In fact, we'll drop one of those maintenance bays and we'll go for some normal maintenance bays as well. Damn, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can quite easily do this. Bear in mind, we still need reactors for en uh, energy weapons, and we might want more energy weapons. It's a bit of a toss-up here. These are definitely, right now, more missile cruisers than they are anything else. And that is fine. Um, we can try and use our missiles to punch above our weight, and we can always, you know, try and bug out. Uh, if you get into beam range, then things get a little bit more dicey. So, let's see if we can just shave a couple of tons off here. Because, again, magazine's going to be replaced a little bit. Um, building the magazine that's going to be one too short, uh, I'm iffy about. Like, I'd rather try and get extra space in the magazine for maybe, like, another go. So let's try doing, say, 24 times and then give everyone more missiles. So 6 times 7 times 24. So 24 times 6 times 7. And that'll mean that there's 8. Uh, so 504. Let's try 504. Uh, 
That'll do it. Whoa, but look at that. We're getting really large now on this. Uh, yeah, I don't fancy that. Let's go back down to where we were. So 36 times 24 um, divided by 2. We want to hit 4, 3, 2. This will do. Again, we're going to be adjusting this later. So we're going to put the company name in. Steel Ordnance. Uh, the explosion chance, 5%. Hit to kill, 11. Capacity. I think we say, you know, just shorten that to C. And then we can just say explosion, 5%. Hit to kill, 11. And then what else do we need here? Uh, it's a 75, 70 in terms of its feed efficiency and neutralization. Mostly that's going to factor into the mass though. So we're just going to put the mass down as one of the most important factors, which is it is 1.6 kilotons. Because really what you want to know is you want to know the capacity for the mass and then the chance of explosions and stuff. So, you know, 70% neutralization, hit to kill 11. Let us instant that out. Refresh our tech. And then magazine. One, two. All right, we need to figure out our reactors now. And here's where things are going to get a bit tricky. We have four here that are C3, and we have two times twin, so four, that are C3. So we have 24 units of power needed, 12 on each of those. Now, we can design reactor that is 24 units of power, and it will be really efficient. But if it gets taken out, then no lasers anymore. We could design two 12s, or we could design four sixes. So we're going to have a look at... Power plant. Stellarator fusion reactor is what we've got. No power plant boost. That's fine. You can get techs that give you a boost, but there's a chance to explode if they're hit. And our power output could be six. And that would mean that we would have basically 200 tons of reactor. If we went up to 12, you'll notice that we get a saving of like 24.5%. And then it only costs less than 80 so suddenly, you know, we're saving maybe 40 tons. I kind of like the idea of going for the 12. So we will go with... Bear in mind, by the way, that this does round sometimes. You have to be a bit cautious. Um, where is the rounded number? Here, right. So look at that. That's 11.8, but it says R12. Be cautious. If you put 11.8 on and you want it to power 12, it will not be enough, even though this is rounding it. I think it should just round down. It does not. I really think it should, because that is a problem. So let us go with this. And we're going to add a company name. DeWitt Engines Limited. First ever reactor. Okay. Stellarator Fusion Reactor. R12. Is anything else important here? Not really. The mass. So mass 78 tons. Um, explosion chances and stuff. Not really. Bear in mind again. Hit to kill. There's no way to increase that. It will always be one. That's why this is vulnerable. Explosion chance of five. I guess we'll just leave that as is. Because, you know... The only way to do that is to increase that chance, so we will instant this. Bear in mind, if it does explode, it's only an explosion chance of uh, size of six, but again, six inside your ship. That's not good. We'll instant this. Again, if we were going to be, you know, really careful, we'd make this smaller. I'm not being careful because we need to get every, like, advantage we can get. We're going to pop down, refresh our tech to power propulsion. We'll add two of those, and then bam, that's gone. And you'll notice that, hey, we've got like a thousand tons left. Let's add another one. And this means that we can add, I'm going to say, four more of our longer range lasers. Ah, oh, we're over our size limit now. We need to shave 200 and a bit tons. Okay, well, what if we got rid of those that we just added and we went up in armor? Ooh. Oh my. We can go up to like 11 armor. That's actually a pretty sexy ship right there. And there's still space to potentially add that um, anti-missile sensor we talked about. However, again, 
The, oh, the maintenance life has come down. Ah, there we go. The reactors are what did it. Okay, well, let's start twiddling around with a few things. We're still within. We're fine. Just over if we do one more. Ah. Okay, I think we add like a little bit more maintenance, say, if we can get like a... What would be like a really tiny maintenance? Potentially the tiny maintenance might have been the clue. There we go. Um, it doesn't have the uh, anti-missile, you know, sensor that we were thinking about, but it can use the ASS from the command to use its lasers on it. The lasers, there's not a lot of them. This isn't a particularly laser-heavy ship. But it's much more a missile ship with 24 launchers using two separate fire controls. Not three fire controls. So we'll only be able to fire them really in batches of 12 unless we start, like, taking launches away manually, which is hassle. But it's a pretty decent ship. I'm really liking this. We fit a lot in this ship. And since it'll be operating in three of these to one command ship, it will be firing 72 missiles in a batch. So I, I kind of like it. I think it's a really good idea. I'm going to lock it down. I'm going to lock that down. Now the Vash, we're going to need to change the designations from Command Cruiser. But I think we've kind of got to the limit for this episode. I know this episode literally has just been designing these ships. But when it comes to like our first military ships, and I want to explain the process behind it. I'm going to be going through it in quite a lot of detail. In future, we might be going a bit quicker. But for now, I wanted to make sure that we're explaining the process, especially when it comes to stuff like missile, anti-missile turrets, that jazz. Um, so sorry today's episode has been much more focused on the ship. It'd be interesting to see what you thought of that. Like, let me know in the Discord or down below in the comments if you're like, hey, you know, I really like the in-depth stuff. It's really helpful. Or, you know, actually, um, I'm looking forward to you know more other stuff in future or whatever. I'm, I'm interested either way. This is a big part of Aurora, so... I've been Enter Elysium. If you've liked, you want to get involved in the interaction, head over to the Discord. Until next time, comment, do stuff, subscribe, you know the drill. Stay shiny.